Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I welcome you from Apollo Hospital Chennai. Today we are uh, starting a very good topic about this uh, COVID era as well as you can say it is a future prospective of a surgery because uh, because it is very, very precious and time of stay in hospital very less and also yeah. so much of uh, uh, outcome good outcome by the surgery so we'll be talking today uh, robotic surgery so i may welcome dr niti jain in digital platform for this very good uh, perspective of uh, surgery why and what is a uh, new era for urological surgery in this COVID time as well as the future. So, uh, Dr. Nitish Jain, I'll be, uh, uh, Dr. I'll be welcome you to webinar session and live program with us. And please, uh, you can give your best inputs, uh, which will be beneficial for everyone. Okay, can I start? Yeah, yeah just yeah. one minute. Uh, uh, I'll be going to with you. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, good afternoon, doctor. You can start the session now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, of, first of all, I would like to apologize because yesterday we could not do the session uh, because of some technical glitch. Anyway, uh, with technology there will always be some glitches uh, around and uh, today uh, I'm going to give a talk on very interesting topic which is close to my heart robotic surgery the new era of urological surgery to start with Darwin's theory of evolution everyone knows the theory of evolution by natural selection first formulated in Darwin's book on the origin of species in 1859 is the process by which organism changes over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. Same holds true for robotic surgery or any other surgery as well. So as the time goes on, the technical, the principle, everything evolves. So change, change is the only thing which is constant. We keep changing over a period of time with evolution and with technology. So Surgical field actually started way back in, uh, almost 5000 years back and, uh, and we can see a hole there in the skull of this mummy. Probably this was done to drain a EDS. So same we can say that surgery is not a new phenomena. It's uh, there for a while now. Initially in early 19th century surgery used to be very very crude when before the advent of uh, anesthesia where People used to hold the patient and in 18th century people used to hold the patient to remove even a simple uh, bladder stone and the instrument which were being used were very very crude which we can see on the right hand side. But more than surgery I would like to say that there are two other things which have evolved the field of surgery. One is anesthesia and other is the aseptic technique that is the antibiotics. These two actually have changed the surgical era. Initially, people used to say era of big surgery and great surgeon, but with the advent uh, of laparoscopy, now this change, this have become in uh, not a new norm. So actually, initially we were saving lives, but at what cost? We are not saving, we are not improving the quality of life. We are just saving the lives. With big incision, the patient used to go back to their work after a long time and there were incision related complication like herniation, infection, wound dehiscence and all. But with the advent of minimal invasive surgery, all these complications have come down. So who will change is the big bro, that is the open surgery. Initially it was the laparoscopy who challenges. So this resulted in the evolution of minimal access surgery. So what were the benefits of minimal access surgery? It actually resulted in less blood loss, fewer complication, the hospital stay was very less, the recovery was very fast and the scarring, the cosmetic appearance was very, very appealing. There was less chances of infection, the pain was significantly less and the cosmosis was improved. 
these are the benefits of laparoscopy surgery. I'm not going right now into the robotic surgery. So whether laparoscopy was the end of the road, whether we as a surgeons were satisfied, the answer was big no. We surgeons are usually very, very greedy and we are never satisfied and our bill always mangi more. So we wanted a solution where we could add the advantage of minimal invasive surgery like laparoscopic surgery and open surgery we can be amalgamated together and we can have a surgery which have it. Then came our romance with robo. But why robotic? Robotic actually resulted in, in uh, uh, because in laparoscopic surgery there was no depth perception. That is the vision was only pretty. In fact, now 3D laparoscopy is available, but there are only in view few selected centers. The hand tremors were very high. If you are going to do a long surgery by laparoscopy because of uh, the long po the posture and ergonomic there is hand tremor the, so the precision of the surgery goes away there is a decreased range of motion because most of the robotic uh, laparoscopic instruments are rigid and then can be moved only in four directions unlike a laparoscopic instrument which can, where there is a degree of motion almost seven degree the ergonomically laparoscopic surgery is uncomfortable, especially when it, they are done for long duration, like some of the complicated urological surgery like radical cystectomy or radical prostatectomy, where they require pretty long hours of surgery. The ergonomics are very uncomfortable. And laparoscopy, believe me, as compared to robotic, have got, got more uh, learning curve as compared to robotics. So what are the advantages of uh, robotic over laparoscopy? Here we can see whatever the disadvantages of laparoscopic surgeries were there, they actually got converted into the advantages of robotic surgery. So the, the technologies or the engineers have taken into considered consideration all the disadvantages of laparoscopic surgery and they try to convert into the advantage of robotic surgery. So we can see there is improved 3D visualization, the dexterity improved, the degree of movement improved and uh, the tremors, uh, scale of motion, everything improved with the advent of robotic surgery. So it all needed motivation and teamwork. Teamwork of scientists, engineers, surgeons and everyone. So it was a teamwork effort to uh, make these changes. So it actually started with the weakness and strength of minimal invasive All weaknesses and the strength of minimal invasive surgery were incorporated and the open surgery uh, strengths were also incorporated to result in the formation of robotic surgery, which resulted in a smaller incision, shorter post-operative time, infection, faster rehabilitation, less pain and better cosmosis. It also resulted in better hand-eye coordination and deg a better degree of motion. So we right now we are having the Da Vinci XI system, which is the most advanced robotic system. Of course, we have SP system, which is not currently available in India. It is available only a few parts of the USA, which is just advancement of this technology where there is only single port. But this is the most advanced form of robotic surgery, which we are having here in Apollo uh, Chennai. This is the XI system. So basically a Da Vinci surgical system consists of a surgical console, a patient cart and uh, endo wrist instrument. So this is the uh, visual cart where, uh, where the assistant sees the what going on in the assistant at the bedside surgical nurse sees what going in the surgery and they can help in assisting that. This is the patient cart or the main robo with the arms which is docked into the patient and with all the instrument and this is the console from where actually the surgeon operates. So it's not the robo who is operating. Basically it is the surgeon who guides the robo through data transmission and the same thing is transmitted inside the patient and the surgery is being done. So if there is no surgeon the robo himself cannot operate. So traditionally laparoscopic surgery, if you see, we have got only four degree of motion. 
up and down and sideways but in robotic surgery we have got almost 7 degree of motion and the wrist here can be moved in any direction so it resulted in better dexterity and better mo uh, range of motion of course in robo also we don't have tactile sens sensation uh, but in uh, laparoscopy we have got some indirect tactile sensation but usually most of the time this sh shortfall is overcome because of your visual tactile sensation which we get while we are dissecting the tissue currently medical robo are being used in almost all field like orthopedics neurosurgery gynae cardiothoracic surgery urology and uh, your gastroenterology but the robo which is being used in orthopedics and neurosurgery they are pretty different as compared to what is being used in gynae cardiac surgery urology and uh, your gastro surgery almost whatever almost right almost the uh, whatever work being done by a robo almost 80% of the work is done by the urologist because most of our work is in the deep compartment of the pelvis where the space is very narrow we cannot go in with our hand because if you insert our hand almost all the pelvis is filled, uh, filled with our hand and with instrument also doing laparoscopic surgery is bit tedious so urology is the most benefited branch as compared to any other branch for robotic surgery if we compare the degree of motion in laparoscopy as well as uh, robotic we can see laparoscopic instrument can be moved only in four direction up down and sideways whereas laparoscope uh, robotic instrument can be moved in up down and side uh, and the wrist also can be moved in seven direction so this is the biggest advantage of robotic surgery so such a small instrument can go deep down in the pelvis and we can do a very good dissection as well as anastomosis or joining of tissues so basically conventional laparoscopic surgery are rigid and they don't have wrist whereas the robotic instrument they have endo wrist instrument and tips can be moved just like a human wrist it can be moved just like a human wrist and allows surgeon to operate with increased dexterity and precision so when we see the magnification in your uh, robotic surgery is almost 10 times the binocular vision what we get in robotic surgery is almost 10 times as compared to the normal vision so whatever things we are seeing it is almost 10 times magnified so the precision of the calmac di patiyechi so the precision of the surgery actually increases many fold 1980 डिफिकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीकल्टीक
so in case if you are doing some fine suturing like vessel anastomosis or doing a robotic kidney transplant or a recipient surgery the motion the scale of mo motion uh, can be improved and the anastomosis can be much much better there is a 3d visualization and of course in near future probably we'll also see the era of telesurgery that is someone sitting here in chennai probably can operate somewhere in west bengal or assam or anywhere but definitely with technology there are also limitation because people still are reluctant to accept this technology because of the trust involved because they feel a surgery is being done by a machine not by the surgeon but definitely it's not true surgeon has to be there to do the surgery it's not the robot who is going to do the surgery it requires definitely additional training you cannot go and straight away do a robotic surgery it needs certification and uh, uh, certification to do the surgery like any electronic equipment these are not fail proof i'm um, probably one in 10000 cases you may have some technical glitches and at that time the machine may not work but definitely most of the robotic surgeon they are well experienced either they can convert the surgery into open surgery laparoscopic surgery and if you have not gone too far probably we can do at a, at a later date and most of the amc and the maintenance done by this da vinci company is very good and usually we get the machine repaired within 24 to 48 hours most of the <clears throat> uh, these instruments are pre programmed and they can be used only for particular number of times so the cost of the surgery is phenomenally high as compared to a normal surgery and we cannot use the same instruments again and again so this is the main difficulty probably if you have more and more reusable instrument just like a laparoscopic surgery probably the cost of the surgery will come down as compared to your laparoscopic surgery and probably it will be it can spread far and wide then there is some latency in transmission especially if you are going to do some tele surgeries that's why it, it has not become popular of course people have done transatlantic cholecystectomy and appendicectomy but there was some millisecond lag is you know, because of that still it has not come into work but near future with the advent of uh, with faster internet probably will have when uh, a tele surgery also in near future the other biggest limitation of a da vinci system is the cost the cost is phenomenally high to procure the machine it is almost close to 2 million dollar and the maintenance cost itself is almost 1.6 lakhs per year so the cost is very very high to procure the machine and to maintain the machine so not all institute and uh, over uh, uh, across the country can afford this so there are very few select center where they are offering robotic surgery and apollo chennai is one of those center so there is also some ethical in robotic surgeries like when there is a marginal benefit from using robo like in some surgery there may be marginal benefit so is it ethical for a surgeon to impose the financial burden on patient and medical system of course we don't advise robotic surgery for each and every surgery like for a cholecystectomy or i am i am not a surgeon so i am not going to go in that but probably a simpler surgery like an nephrectomy or retinal nephrectomy probably uh, robotic may not be that useful but definitely it is very useful if you are going to to do a robotic prostatectomy partial nephrectomy pyeloplasty and any other reconstructive surgery where we need lot of suturing and reconstruction so in those cases probably it has got lot of role to play sometimes the robotic surgery fails so who's Uh, because of some te technical problem so here comes again the technical and safety consideration so who will be at fault the surgeon or the company so that question is still unresolved and many a time most of the time the surgeon have to face the burn so what are the challenges and future future consideration right now we don't have a good haptic feedback from robotic system of course we are having a visual feedback but in near future probably we'll have this and we'll have much better haptic feedback and the precision of surgery will go far and uh, much higher still it is on uh, a very high as compared to your open laparoscopy but it will go far and uh, much higher than that 
A safe and easily sterilizable, accurate and cheap and compact robo is the need of power. Probably with once the patency of the Da Vinci goes, probably we'll have more and more people who will come into the market and probably this will you know, become cheaper. We have seen like internet or even the mobile phone. When it was launched, the prices were sky high, but now almost you can buy a mobile even for 1000 rupees. So same thing will happen even for uh, robotic. Even laparoscopy when it started, it was quite expensive. Now you can see laparoscopy is done even in smaller centers. So the reliable of telesurgical capability, still it is in the pipeline. It will take a while uh, to do telesurgery. Compatibility, like most of the instrument, they make it only compatible with one company. So compatibility, we cannot, just like a mobile phone charger, we cannot use a Samsung charger for an iPhone cha uh, to charge an iPhone. So same thing happens here also. So all the company actually, they want their product to be sold. So they make it in such a way that we, one product is not compatible with other. Probably this is a business policy and we, you know, the engineers have to look uh, into it. We need fusion of technology. That is image guided surgery. Probably this is next big thing to happen in medical science where we can integrate CT scan or MRI into our operating field and we can have a live image when we are doing a surgery and probably it will further increase the precision of surgery, especially the oncological surgery. Better energy sources are the need of ours and probably a dress rehearsal where we can feed all the data of your CT scan, MRI or pre-op imaging into the robotic system. We can reconstruct the image and the patient and probably just like a movie star or someone, we can dress rehearsal the surgery and probably the outcome for a complex surgery will be much better. Probably here the 3D printing also will help in doing this. So evolution of surgery, we have seen in 1980, 1990, it was a era of freehand surgery. Then from 1990 to 2020, uh, 2000, it was minimal. That is the laparoscopic surgery. From 2000 actually started till today, it started the era of robotic surgery. So what is next in the coming year? Probably it is the micro robo where the instruments will be miniaturized and the small and small robo can do the surgery. I'm just showing you a small clip, two small clips. One is of robotic partial nephrectomy. Uh, here we can see these are the robotic arm and there's a, this is the kidney, this is the liver. So we are dissecting the colon out. We are bringing the colon out. This is the hilum. Hilum is the uh, basically the renal artery and vein which supplies the kidney and the entire blood supply. So once that is done, we can see there's a large tumor which is almost engulfing the half of the kidney. Even this sort of complex tumor can be done very effectively by robotic surgery and we can save the entire kidney. So this is intraoperative ultrasound which is being used and so once that is done, we can uh, cut the tumor. So here we are just clipping the small vessel which is supplying the kidney and we are cutting the tumor off the kidney. So we can see only the tumor is removed. The entire kidney is saved. Initially, uh, probably 10 years ago, most of this uh, patient would have undergone complete removal of the kidney. But now with the advent of robotic surgery and more and more better imaging, we are able to do more partial uh, nephrectomy. So in case a patient is having a kidney tumor, it is always better to see a urologist and decide whether we can save the kidney or not. So always ideal to save a kidney as far as possible rather than just removing the kidney for this uh, uh, kidney for a small tumor. So most of the tumor which are less than five to six centimeter and if and, uh, they are located in some good location, feasible location where parcel can be done, they usually undergo partial nephrectomy rather than complete removal of the kidney, which is known as radical nephrectomy. So here we can see once we have done that, we have removed the kidney, we have sutured, the vascularity of the kidney is maintained and we are just approximating the two ends of the kidney, two sides of the kidney so that there is no bleeding. 
so once that is done the sutures are tightened and we can uh, the clamps are removed we can see there no bleeding the kidney is well preserved uh, well preserved so only the tumor tumor was removed and the kidney was well preserved for this this is again one of the commonest surgery we do for uh, uh, prostate this is usually done for cancer prostate here the, this is actually the posterior peritoneum which covers the seminal vesicle and we usually cut it open that peritoneum to see the seminal vesicle seminal vesicle is here and these are the vas which carries actually the sperm from the testis to the urethra connects the seminal vesicle so we cut the both the vas right and left side this is the seminal vesicle once we do that we go into the fascia of denovirus basically you have posteriorly here the rectum posteriorly here the rectum and above there is seminal vesicle so we, it has to be done very carefully and remember this surgery we are doing deep inside the pelvis you can see the precision we can see all this structure very very clearly unlike in open surgery where most of the time it is done uh, blindly and in laparoscopic surgery this dissections are little more tricky as compared to doing by a robotic surgery so once that is done this is the dvc stitch this is the main and uh, these are the vessels which are coming from the penis onto the urethra on bladder so these vessels are taken care in a well sutured and this is a anchoring suture onto the periosteum of the pubic symphysis which helps in maintaining the continence remember remove in case of cancer prostate surgery once we remove the prostate we directly anastomose the bladder to the urethra so at times many of this patient may have incontinence so this anchoring suture or suspension suture sometimes helps in men in early uh, continence so once that is done these are the neurovascular bundle which can be seen very very nicely because of the 10 time magnification of the robotic uh, surgery and this helps in preservation of the erectile function so many of this patient who undergo uh, radical prostatectomy surgery can have incontinence and erectile dysfunction and with robotic uh, surgery probably this function can be preserved but definitely we need to assess the patient in case of very high grade tumor we don't do any nerve preserving surgery only in case of low grade tumor or the tumor on uh, no, that side we don't so once that is done this is bladder neck reconstruction the bladder uh, mouth is narrowed so that only the catheter enters and then we anastomose then we anastomose the bladder to the urethra nicely so we can see the suturing part is much much easier when we are doing by a robotic surgery remember doing this even by laparoscopy where of course we have the magnification is very very tedious because we need to have this sort of movement where the move uh, instrument can be moved almost in 7 degree unlike in laparoscopy where we have got rigid instrument just like if you are eating by hand and Uh, eating rice with hand and eating rice with chopstick unless until you are well versed just like uh, uh, well versed you cannot eat rice or even noodles also with chopstick is very very difficult so with robotic surgery you can just compare the robotic instrument and the laparoscopic laparoscopic instrument with hand and chopsticks so ultimately it all depends on the surgeon it's not robo who is going to do the surgery is the main behind the machine who does the surgery thank you with this i end my presentation in case if anyone is having any doubts he can ask thank you thanks a lot